See, I'll be talking something about which probably all of us we face day in and out. I believe that there is no person in the hall who does not have a smartphone. I believe that most of us have more than two, or at least two SIMs, two SIMs, one is of Geo. So, there is something which I wanted and I continuously see for the last couple of years and more so for the last, last two or three years. Something which worries me, something which is of concern to the society, something which is of concern to children, teenagers. So I wanted to talk about, I wanted really to talk about in a forum something about mobile phones and certain psychiatric issues and what we need to talk about, what we need to know before we engage in some sort of behavior related to this mobile phone. There's a term called as nomophobia. So it's a proposed name for a phobia. But there's a term called as nomophobia. So phobia of being out of cellular phone contact. No mobile phone phobia. That is nomophobia. This happens because of an overconnection syndrome. Somehow our day-to-day face-to-face interactions with other people has been taken care by the mobile phone. We have a lot of anxiety regarding a loss of mobile phone, even loss of connection, that is lo loss of internet, loss of our phone going dead, a battery going dead. The people who talk about that they have mobile switched on every day, every hour, throughout night, there are people who keep on seeing mobile every minute so that they may not miss out anything, any notification, any ring, a like or something like that. So this particular thing is called as anxiety. See, anxiety. So all of us, we know about what anxiety is. Gabra, uncomfortable sensation, makes us feel a bit jittery. And somebody has also compared this nomophobia anxiety to almost be equivalent to having a wedding day, wedding day jitters. So on the wedding day, you feel uncomfortable, a lot of things happening, something mobile has to do, loss of that mobile has something to do, the anxiety related to loss of mobile has to do something about that level of anxiety as the anxiety you have on your own wedding day. Or even going for a surgical procedure, going to a dentist. So imagine people having anxiety of losing phone, contact, dead battery, there are people who carry chargers. Most of us, we have done it and many of us, you might be carrying chargers at this point of time. So what is internet addiction? Yes. What causes this mobile phone phobia? What causes this nomophobia? What is this addiction to about? Is this addiction very different from other addictions? We've seen people getting addicted to drugs, smoking, alcohol, Harder drugs, cocaine, and now heroin. Probably the next thing I'll be able to, I think I'll be talking about. So in the brain, there is a pleasure center. Everything, everything we do, which makes us pleasurable. So there's a part of the brain which gets stimulated, and there's a particular hormone which gets secreted. This hormone's name is called as dopamine. So everything, every time you have a pleasurable experience, there is this hormone push. So we feel good. Similarly, every time you go on to check your mobile, check your likes and you check uh, things and notifications and social interactions, probably the same things happens. It is a similar sort of a dependency as what happens with drugs. This excessive use of mobile or compulsive mobile phone use or eye disorder. You have iPhones. So there's a disorder known by that name that's called as eye disorder. So there's a specific change which we know that causes a change in social behavior. We would interact with friends. I would like to interact and meet a person. Maybe I'll go from here and meet a person. Talk to him for a while. Talk about how it went. What is this about? There were people who were talking so nicely about so many things. Instead of this, I plan to just go, have my, watch my television and take my mobile phone for hours and probably the same thing goes through the same 
information goes through the social media. That's good. But once this social interaction starts changing to only a technological interaction, there is what problems comes. This use of mobile phone is basically dependent on only two factors. So one is reward learning. And the second one is fear of missing out. So reward learning, I mean to say, some things which have rewarded us in the past, they make sense to us. Something which was, which was enjoyable in the past, a picnic, some of us friends went there, we had a lot of fun. So probably I will try to make that picnic happen again. There was an interaction with a wonderful teacher. I wanted to see that teacher and talk to her again. So anything which has in the past rewarded us with a pleasurable feeling, we repeat it. This mobile phone, because of certain photographs, because of certain interactions, because of certain likes and whatever it is, they have rewarded us in the past and we keep on checking to have that sense of the reward. Since it is not always a reward that is called as a constant reward, but it is an intermittent reward. So we tend to keep on checking to get that feeling again and again. Also, there is an escape of burden. Many of you might not be interested in what I am saying. It's a wonderful feeling. Leave this window open, another windows, a number of windows, probably that would be more pleasurable. So I can be boring, but you have an option in your hand. You can see for that options because there are a number of things at your palm. This is an escape from burden and I have seen people, they have been saying in people that people say that they do not feel complete without their phones, without their smartphones. Imagine a person who is doing this in day in and out without a smartphone. He would not feel complete. This has become an extended ego. This has become an extended part of the body. Not only this, there is a lot of health hazards. The mobile phone, because it goes from one place to another, using it in a number of places, you would be very surprised to know that one in every six mobile phone is actually infected with the fecal matter. The same bacteria what we have in toilets, fecal matters, we actually have in our mobile. E. coli is the name of the bacteria. It is known to cause diarrhea and probably when it is transmitted from one person to another, infection goes. Health people, the doctors, the nurses who are carrying their mobile in the hospitals during the round, probably they are transmitting bacteria, infectious agents from one part to another. So a lot of hazard. Not many people know about it. So places, ICU, some places, evolved places, mobile phone is not allowed because that acts as a reservoir. The same fecal material from your place, somebody goes to a person in ICU who is immunocompromised, does not have a defense, the immunological defense in the body, probably again a problem. Not only this, it also creates a lot of, lot of trouble for people because of financial issues keep on going online, online shopping, online gambling, online uh, time, you lose your job, you lose your status, so probably there is a, there's a problem again. Coming to another perspective of internet addiction is about gaming disorder. World Health Organization, it is an organization which keeps a list of all diseases in the world has actually included gaming disorder the last day, that is June 2018. Within an international classification of diseases, we did a lot of programs when this was introduced. Now the structure of games has changed. PUBG wale hai kya? You've seen that a Prime Minister talking about. See, it was wonderful of him that he talked about a Prime Minister knows what is happening at a ground level with the children. I was really, really, really very amazed that the Prime Minister of India made sense when he talked about the PUBG wale hai You would be again uh, surprised to know the business what PUBG did last year that was 24,000 crore of which 12,000 crore was an earning for the person. 12,000 crores for one year I am talking about. This is a data. Massively multiplayer online role playing games. I play a role of a person. I can choose that role, I can choose that imagine, imagine role, I am not that good looking but I can really see a person who is 
more muscular, maybe I have a wonderful height and an avatar which I would like to be, I can choose that person. I can interact with these people. I can interact with the people at night at 3 a.m. if my friends are sleeping, there's somebody around the globe, globe who's awake. We can interact, we can still play a game. So there's a lot of preoccupation with people who play games. They think about games. They think about next moves, even when they're not playing. They have problems when they do not play games. They feel restless, moody, irritable, and to have the same excitement and to have the same enjoyment of the game, they need to have more exciting games. They need to have difficult games. And they might need a powerful equipment. They might require a more speed net, which creates a lot of problems. Once they try to reduce the amount of games, they feel edgy, irritable, not uh, emotionally involved. The interest changes. The person is not going to a family function. He is not involved with the friends. He is not studying because he is spending a lot of time on games. He has lost relationship. He has lost, lost finances. And the most important, the last of all, a person playing games in order to regulate the mood. In order to relieve his depressive feelings. There is a concept called a screen time exposure. So when I talk about screen time, screen time includes television, laptops, computers, la smartphones, anything which has a digital exposure to it. It has a screen time. There is a concept of screen time. Then be number of studies to suggest that weight gain is related to the amount of screen time you have, especially the child, uh, the television screen time. So more you're exposed to television. You've seen children staying on bed, watching television and shows for hours together. Maybe having a Coke, chips, whatever it is. They gain weight. They eat unhealthy. So anything to do with this, I don't know. It's all technology. Not a techno-savvy person, but anyways. There is also thing to suggest that people who are exposing more of themselves to screen time, more about more than two hours per day, they have more problems with anxiety, they have more problems with depression. And especially if the screen time is introduced very early in the age, it creates a lot of problems. See, when I see children with academic problems, with school problems and school refusals, what commonly what is a common thing I hear from parents? He's so wonderful about games. He can operate mobile, which none of us, none of the parents can operate. He is so, he is so, so quick and he would actually be very quick. The problem is that once you train your brain for games, it's colourful, changing, involved, immediate reinforcement, a coin. Subway suffers, immediate coin. So this is a game called a subway suffers. If there is another game, immediate reward. Once the same person of a young age, child, say about 2nd, 3rd, 4th class, he goes on to, after say playing about 2 or 3 hours of video games, and now the parent asks him to open a book. Stationary, black and white, not changing, not interacting, no immediate reinforcement, no immediate pressure. And you ask a person to study for exams, which is likely to happen after a year. See, how do you expect a child of 2 to 3 years of age, playing two hours of colourful, stimulating, rewarding things and then finally starting, uh, finally trying to read about something which is in black and white, stationary, not moving. No sense. See, this is how what is happening to children. There's a lot of sleep problems. I'll come to the sleep problems after, after the next slide. There is a strict recommendation from different professionals including pediatricians, psychiatrists, psychologists that children from one to two years, up to age of two years, they should have no screen time exposure. Television, mobile, laptops, nothing. Zero time exposure to screen time. Five minutes, sir? Okay. So already 15. So I'll just quickly go through. So a lot of things to talk about. So maybe I can have another presentation sometimes. So I want you to talk about teenage. The number of teenage people are here. So for teenage, <coughs> few things. Does my teen become irritable, angry, anxious or even violent when the phone is taken away? 
does my team skip or avoid social events, family functions, extracurricular activities to use the phone instead? We are going for a kitty party and one of the child says that I will stay in home because I have to study. <laughs> happens. Happens. We have seen. My teen's personal hygiene, my teen's sleep, my teen's eating habits or moodiness in my child. Have you seen that? So probably somehow something is not right. The technology is not right. A lot number of teens, they spend a lot of time looking for the likes on the photographs. They focus on likes. They make comparison. Because they focus on likes, they tend to engage in certain neg negative behaviors. They tend to engage in social media risky behaviors, something called a sticky challenge or something. These words keep on hearing from patients. Making comparisons. Everybody knows somebody would not project a picture which is not real. Would not project a picture which is real, that's a fake. It's a pleasurable picture. And there's a comparison. There's a reward center and there's a negative center of the brain which gets stimulated. Having too many Facebook friends, but not having real friends. Insomnia, backaches, headaches, poor nutrition, poor personal hygiene, neck pain, see the curvature, cervical problems, I see everything day in and out. So we need to educate, we need to make a plan, monitoring the use with the family, create a policy, establish certain screen free zones and model certain healthy boundaries. If I don't want my child to do that, I would not do it myself. Even Steve Jobs would not allow his children to use the technology he brought for the world. Facebook and Instagram recently they have announced that they will be bringing certain policies so that there is a check on younger people using the mobile phones and the technology. They are inviting regulation from the government. Thank you.